Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the paginator class in Django so you can create pages for your data. So in this example, I'm going to go from this where I have a long list of things to this where I have pages and I can click on these links and it will take me to a different page instead of displaying everything on one page. So that's what I'll be covering in this video. But before I get started, I just want to let you know that I have a free course available called Django Database Essentials. It covers a few different things that you can do in Django using the ORM to interact with the database. So if you're interested in that, just go to prettyprinted.com slash Django Data. I'll also put a link in the description below if you're interested. So let's get into writing the code. Okay, so here's what we're starting with. I have a list of books and as you can see, there's no pagination here. I just have every single book. So I have 180 books. And if we look in the database, uh, we just see a list of books here. And each book has both a title and an author. And I just combine those two things in the template. So to go to the template, what we have after some basic styling is the total number of books. And then we are looping over the list of books and we're just having the book title and the book author um, and the word by in between. So I want to add some pagination to this and here's the book model. So in the views here, I just need to change this slightly. So the first thing I need to do is I need to import the paginator. So the paginator is a class and what I'll do is I'll create a pagination object from that class and that will allow me to create some pagination uh, in the list. So what I can do is I can import it from, so from Django.core.paginator import paginator. So the second paginator is a class, so it needs to be capitalized. And then inside of the view, I can instantiate it using the list of books that I have. So I'm still going to have this query where I query all the books in the database. But after that, I can do something like this. So paginator, or how about this book paginator, is going to be equal to that paginator class that I just imported this query set of books here and then I can specify the number of books per page so let's say 20 books per page right so once I have that then I need to get a particular page object so this just gives me a paginator object which I can't use yet but I can get a specific page so uh, what I want to do is I want to get the first page so I'll say page equals that book paginator dot get page and then I can pass in a page number. So in this case, I want one. And get page won't allow you to get a page that doesn't exist. If you go beyond the number of pages that actually exist, it will just give you the last page. So for example, if there are 10 pages and you put page 100, it's still gonna give you the 10th page. So this is safe uh, when you're using it because uh, what I'm gonna have later is a query string argument that allows you to change the page number. And if the user changes that to something that doesn't exist, you don't want the app to fail. So once you have this page here, uh, then you can pass it to the context. So here I can pass either page directly or I can pass the object list. Uh, what I'll do is I'll pass the page. So instead of books here, I'll just say page and I'll pass page and we'll see how this works in the template momentarily. But before I do that, I want to change this count. So instead of doing books.count, I can still do that because it will give me the right answer, but I can also get a count from the paginator. So I can say book paginator dot count, and it's just an attribute, it's no longer a method. And this will give me the number of items in the paginator, which will be the same as the number of items in this query here. So now if I go over to the template, what I need to do is I need to modify this loop a little bit because now I'm referencing page instead of books. So what I want to do is I want to say page and then I can loop over the object list. So each page has an object list and this represents the objects for that particular page. So since my page length here is 20, this will have 20 books in it. So page.object underscore list and this will have 20 books in it. So I can still say for book, but for book in page dot object list, right? And the count should be the same. So if I go over to here, uh, what I can do is refresh and we see the total number of books is still 180, but we have a much shorter list here. So before what I was doing was 
I was showing every single book. I had 180 books being displayed here. Now I only have 20, right? So if I go back over here, uh, what I wanna do is I want to then use the other methods on the page object to create the links. So the reason why I pass the page object instead of page.objects list is because page has other methods that allow me to determine if I have another page available or a previous page available. Um, and it also tells me the actual page number. So first, let me do the page number. So if I go over to the template, I can add this uh, H2 and I can say page number and then uh, page dot number, right? So if I go to here, we see page number one. And if I change this in the view, let's say I want page four and refresh this, this should change to four. And it does. And it gives me a completely different list of books. So we know that this part is working. Well, in addition to having the actual page number, what I can do is I can check to see if there exists a next page and if there exists a previous page. That way I can add links. So what I'll do is I'll add a div down here and this will represent the page link. So I call it this page links, right? Yeah, so page links. And I want to have two links, uh, possibly. So if there is a previous page, I want to have a link to the previous page. And if there's a next page, I wanna have a link to the next page. So in the case where you're on the first page, there won't be a previous page, so nothing should appear. And when you're on the last page, there isn't a next page, so the next link shouldn't appear. So that's what I'll add here. So first I need to add this if statement. So if page dot has previous, right? So this is checking to see if there exists a previous page, meaning you are on a page that's greater than the first page then I can add a link here. So let me just add the uh, closing tag, end if, and I'll add a link. So before I add the actual location of the link, I'll just add the link itself and I'll say uh, previous page. And here I'll say if page has next, so it works in the exactly same way. I'll add a link and we'll call this next page and then we just have to close out the tag there. So now if I go over here and refresh, we see I have a previous page and a next page. They don't do anything yet because I didn't put the actual location for the links, but we see they appear. And no, I'm on the fourth page, so I have both links. If I go back to the first page here and then refresh, we see that the previous link disappears because there is no previous page. And if I go to a page that doesn't exist, so let's say page 100, like I said earlier, if you go here, it will give you the, the last page instead of giving you an error. So if I refresh this, we see page nine and we don't have a next page link. So it's page nine because I have 180 items in the database, 20 items per page. So nine times 20 is 180. So there's nothing for page 10, only up to page nine. So now what I wanna do is I want to allow the, both the user to specify the page and I want the links to have the pages in them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the page number from the URL. So I can say page number is equal to request.get.get page. So I'm going to have something in the URL like this where you have the query string argument and I can say page equals four for instance and that will give me page four, right? So I'll take this page number, put it here, and now let's try this. So I have page four, we see page four appears. If I change this to eight, we have page eight. If I change this to one, we have page one. So the last thing I need to do is I need to make the links work so I can do that automatically. So I'll go back to the template and what I'll do is I'll go to the links and I just need to use the URL tag. So URL and the name of my view is index and I can close that out and it's going to be the same for both. And then I can add the uh, query string argument after. So uh, the question mark and then page equals, and this is gonna be the same for both. And then I can add the actual page number for the previous page and the page number for the next page. So to get the previous page, use the page object again, and you say previous page number. So if you're on page five, this will give you page four. And then I can do the same thing for the other one. 
And instead of previous page number, it will be next page number. And now if I go back and refresh the page, now when I click on the links, they're working. So page two, page three, four, I can go all the way up until I get to the last page. And then I can also go down through the pages until I get back to the first page and then the previous link disappears. So this is pretty convenient in Django if you have something that you don't wanna have like a entire list of things on one page and say you wanna paginate it. And just note that this paginator doesn't only work with query set lists, it also works with any kind of iterable. So if you have like a list of things, like a regular Python list, you can also use a paginator and it works in exactly the same way. But typically you do use it for things in the database because you're not exactly sure how many items would return. So that's it for using the paginator. There are some other little things you can do. I'll link to the documentation uh, below, but in this video, I pretty much covered the main things. So if you're interested in that, you can click on the link below. Like I said earlier, if you wanna go get the uh, Django Database Essentials course, you can go to my website, prettyprinted.com slash Django Data, and you can get that. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching, and I will talk to you next time.